entities that want the Fed and even the ECB to remain hawkish. Everyone else is like, please give us a break. Where do you come down on this? Hey, Charles, thanks for inviting me. You know, I think what the OECD is trying to say is that they're really worried that there's going to be a replay of the 1970s. So what they're looking at, and remember, the OECD is looking at many countries, not just the U.S., what they're looking at is that they're seeing that countries are having slower growth and there's more political pressure for on central banks to cut rates. And they're afraid that the central banks will cave, cut rates, and then we'll see a basically a decade of high inflation. Now, if you look at other countries, for example, Poland. In Poland, you know, the central bank cut rates by 75 basis points ahead of a major election. Was it because mission accomplished? Well, their inflation printed at 10%. And let me tell you, 10% is not their target. Or you can even look at Canada now. In Canada, you have the premiers of three major provinces writing letters to Tiff Macklem, the, the governor of the Big of Canada, begging him to not hike rates anymore. So the OECD is worried that politics is going to get into to the way and that we'll be in a situation where we have another uh, decade of high inflation. Now, right. in the U.S., we're a bit lucky. So U.S., uh, so far, with the exception of, say, maybe one senator, I think Congress has been pretty supportive of the Fed's role. There's more uh, Fed independence. But I think across the world, I think other countries are not in the same situation, right. I, and the OECD is worried. I about think that. you're. I think you're alluding uh, to Elizabeth Warren. Although, although, <laughs> although, I will say this: uh, a lot of folks in Congress, uh, particularly in the Senate, wanted the Fed to be aggressive and kind of challenged up uh, uh, Jay Powell to show us his inner Paul Volcker. But the '70s, Arthur Burns, ironically enough, when it all was said and done, even though he's considered like you know a failure, he said it was political pressure. To your point that made him pause. Now, the last time we spoke, you were confident about the U.S. economy. It sounds like you still kind of feel that way. So with that as, your, as, as, as the backdrop, what kind of a landing are we looking at? I would suspect next year we'll have some sort of conclusion to all of this. Hard landing, soft landing, what are you saying? You know, so far it looks like soft landing. As was just said, there's a whole range of GDP forecasts, so we don't really know what, what things are. But we do know what the first two quarters were, and the first two quarters were pretty solid. Now, the U.S. GDP is, let's say, 1.8 percent on trend growth. First quarter, second quarter, both uh, 2 percent, so above trend. This quarter looks like, you know, there is a range of views, but it looks like it's going to be okay as well. Consumer spending data continues to be strong, mm -hmm. and most importantly, fiscal deficit is still there. And I think that's, that's behind a lot of U.S. economic strength, and I think that's going to continue. So, so far, I think we're, we're on track for a soft landing, so, so I got, I'm not as worried. I got less than a minute to go. I think I found something that you're worried about. We're going to have to start calling you Cool Hand Joe here. Uh, liquidity, a liquidity event, how might that play out? No, I think liquidity is really bad in the market. So what we saw in March 2020, what that at the end of the day, what that means, what happened was that the markets have grown so big, but the underlying capacity to provide liquidity, that is to say, the dealer capacity to intermediate, has really not grown in sync with the markets. Like for example, looking at the treasury market, today we're at, say, 26 trillion market treasuries. Now, the dealer balance sheets today are actually smaller than they were before the great financial crises. And so because there's just not enough capacity to intermediate. We have, markets are fragile. We are, could be in a situation where uh, we have a replay of March 2020. I'm not saying that it's happening right now or imminent, but structurally speaking, nothing that, nothing that broke in March 2020 has been fixed and it's only gone worse. Wow, I think that's a hell of a statement to say. Nothing that was structurally broken has been fixed. Joseph, thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it.